All right, we're back with the 1999 Suzuki RM125. So last video on this bike, we picked it up for a thousand bucks, really good deal. The seller said that it was slowly losing compression. So we actually tore down the bike and found that the cylinder was pretty badly damaged. Um, there's some pieces flaking off on the actual sleeve here, you can see. I can get a flashlight and show you guys, but it's breaking apart at the sleeve. See that? These pieces were breaking apart. And I think a couple pieces fell in and scored up the piston, is what I'm thinking. Um, and then a couple other pieces were breaking off down below. So we went ahead and got a new used cylinder off of eBay. We paid 450 bucks for this thing. It is really hard to find a 99 RM125 for a good deal. They were all over $500. So this is the best one I could find. It is perfect on the inside, not a single scratch or imperfection in there. So we got lucky and got a pretty decent one here. As you can see, I think it's spotless on there. And uh, if you guys remember last video, the piston was all wrecked. See that? It's like warped right there. There's tons of blow-by right here. And then you can see it was damaged right there. The ring got caught in there. So that was not good. They did have the holes drilled for it. So I'm not sure what caused that. I think it was the piece of the sleeve that fell in and uh, damaged that piston. Because if you look down here by the bridge, where is it? You can actually see a little piece of the cylinder missing right there. See that little piece missing? So something got lodged in between the piston sleeve and the piston and just chomped everything up. And uh, I think that ring was stuck into the piston and it was slowly losing compression. So unfortunately we had to order up the new cylinder and that set us back 450 bucks. And then we obviously ordered up a new piston. This is a Pro X piston. It's on the standard bore still, so that's good. But this says back another hundred bucks. And then we got a new air filter for it, some gaskets, and that's pretty much it. This bike didn't eat a whole lot. Um, we're gonna go through the carburetor today as well, make sure that's all perfect. And uh, hopefully we can get this bike up and running today and go test it out. Right now it is snowing here in Wisconsin quite a bit. So we'll have a little snow ride at the end of the video. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is uh, hone out this cylinder. I already cleaned up the inside of the cylinder here, so we're just gonna add a little two-stroke oil to help lubricate. And then we'll get the hone in there and start honing away. I don't think it's gonna take a whole lot. You can still see the cross hatches, see that? Like I said, not gonna take a whole lot. We'll check it out, see what that looks like. And if you guys are wondering where I got this hone from, Harbor Freight has these for like 20 bucks, I think. So, really cheap. So if you wanna do it at home, uh, just pick up a hone and you're 20 bucks in, get a new piston and you're set to go for new top end. Two stroke bikes are pretty easy. The one thing I do recommend though is taking out the power valves before you do this. Otherwise you're risking the honing material in all the ports and it can score up the piston later on. So yeah, you can see now that looks really nice. You want to be able to see those cross hatches on the cylinder wall. See how nice that is. All even. Well, but we'll take a toothbrush or I like to use this brass brush I just picked up for like five bucks. So you can go through, get all the gunk off the cylinder, 
I'm trying to get all that honing material out. Dunk this in. All right, as you can see, everything is cleaned up really nice. Everything looks perfect. So what we're gonna do now is measure up the piston. So we went with a Pro X piston this time. These are pretty good, manufactured in Japan. So it should say made in Japan on here. Yep, right there, made in Japan. Um, just kind of fit this up here. Make sure we have the correct size. Yep, feels good. So we've got that. We've got the ring here. All right, let's see what that looks like. So there's no marking on the ring. So this ring can be installed either way. You can see no marking on the ring at all. So it doesn't matter which way you put the ring. We've got the circlips here, and then the pan. So open that up. All right, that all looks good. I believe this piston came with the holes already drilled. Yep. So these two holes are drilled for the exhaust bridge. And the exhaust bridge is right here on a dirt bike. So exhaust side, and you can see that thin bridge it's called right there. That needs extra lubrication from these holes. So as this piston gets hot, it expands. And sometimes that exhaust bridge expands as well. And the piston can get caught in there and uh, it can score up the cylinder and the piston and wreck everything. So you really need those holes drilled to prevent that. So those look good. Um, let's now check the ring gap here. The old piston ring gap, let's just quick check that. You can see this is what the old ring looked like. It was horrible. And you can see the, the ring gap is pretty much non-existent. See that? Look how big that is. It doesn't even compress the ring. And that's why I had no compression. So the new one should be a lot better. Check it out. Yeah. That's a little bit more like it. And you can see that gap is nice and tight in there. Get a feeler gauge in there. That looks like almost probably 14 thousandths, I'm guessing. A little bit smaller. I think it might be 13 thousandths. Yep, 13 thousandths. So that's a nice tight ring gap. That looks perfect. We'll set that off to the side. So piston looks perfect. Um, 
Let's go ahead and install the power valves next. All right, so the power valves are going to be angled down like that, cut out towards the bottom. So we're gonna go in like that with them. And these are just gonna slide in place like this. Then you can see there's three holes for bolt holes. We're gonna take our Allens. Alright, then our rod can go through. So this is gonna go through just like this. All right, so we got the set screw in. The set screw is a little Allen right there. So we'll tighten that down. All right, that looks good. So now you can see the power valves are coming in and out and it's attached to that rod that's spinning. So that is perfect. Let's go over here. Now this spring mechanism right here with this little shaft off of it, is going to be pointing down. A screw that goes into there. Into here. So you can see there on the spring there's a little wire that sticks out like that on both ends. So you want that to go through the little groove in the end of the rod here. And then the other end, you want to attach to the little groove right there. That's gonna go like this. You can push that in. So right now we're set at zero. Then we will put this on. You can see there's a little arrow on here. That's gonna be the direction that you turn this to tension that spring. All right, so according to the manual, you want to tension these bolts just a little bit so it holds it in place. And it says to go one full revolution clockwise with it. So this end, you can mark it with a permanent marker um, just to make sure we've got the right end here. This end right here needs to end up back at the arrow. So we're going to do one full turn here. And then we will tighten these down. Now it should be tensioned here. Yep. So if you look, it'll spring back. And it's, it should be fairly strong. Everything's working in there. Everything looks good. All right, now we can get our gasket on and our cover here. 
gonna go on like that. And there will be four bolts. Now we're getting the circlip in the piston here. I like to take a flathead screwdriver, stick one end of the clip in there, and then just try to force this one in. And we'll get it like halfway like that. And then you can take the screwdriver and just pop it in place. Just like that. That looks good. Now we can get the ring on. Like I said before, this ring has no markings. We'll check it over one more time just to make sure. But yep, no markings, so. Line it up with the pin here and get that ring there. So, arrow is going to be pointing towards the exhaust side of the bike. The B will be the intake. And you can see it's lined up with the pin right there and the piston. So, we will lube everything up here. To lube everything, lube up the pin. Loop up the ring here. I like to spin the ring around a couple times. Get that nice and looped up and then put it back where the pin is there. All right, and then the cylinder can be looped up. Just a little bit of oil on there. Looks pretty good. Alright, we're going to be using a little ultra black gasket maker on the base gasket. Just a very thin amount on here. Just holds it in place and prevents any leaking at the base gasket. Looks like this was a new stud. Now we'll put another Bolt on there. And tighten those two down. This one has to go over that rod. There we go. Here a little bit with some oil. The lower area. It's been lubed up here. We can get this piston on. And then the circlip has to go in. 
All right, time to get the cylinder on. Make sure piston ring is in the groove. Make sure it kicks over smooth. This one. Come back to this one over here. This one. All right, we'll look at the torque spec for that, but check how smooth that is in there. All right, so cylinder head nuts are going to be torqued to 18 foot-pounds, and then the cylinder nuts are also 18 foot-pounds. So we'll do crisscross pattern here. All right, O-rings going on. I just oiled these up a little bit. Let's see if that drops right in. And it looks like we got to stretch that one just a tad. Sometimes they need to be stretched just a little bit. All right, that looks good. Let's see the inner one. As you can see it needs to be stretched a little bit. All right, that sits in there perfect. Now we can get the head on. So we're not gonna shave that down at all. Goes on just like that. Eighteen foot pounds, here we go. This bolt right here. to slip this on. It goes in here like this. Like that. And that goes in between there like that. That gets tightened now. Gasket and cover here. Next, we can get our reeds in.
All right, we have a new exhaust gasket. Just gonna quick oil that up. And then we'll get the new one on here. So if you guys remember, this bike came with this air filter with a rag over it. So I'm thinking that's part of the reason the cylinder was wearing down so fast. Everything out. So we're gonna replace the air filter with a brand new one. All right, here's the new air filter. Bring that guy up. Don't think that's oiled up already. If you like it, so. Our foam filter oil. Let's put a little on there. Alright, I can work this in. Cage. It goes this way. We're gonna put a little grease on the outside. This helps it get a nice tight seal here. So no dirt can get in. Alright, air filters in there, looking good. Alright, let's drain off this old oil. That oil looks brand new actually. Really clear. Right down here, it says 750 milliliters. So that's what we're adding. So we're just using 
10 W40 wet quench oil. Dump that in. All right, we'll go ahead and make sure the jetting's correct for this bike. We are running a pro circuit silencer and exhaust. See what we got. We've got a 168. They recommend the A165 for pro circuits. So that's right in that range. Here, take a look at the float and the needle. Do a quick cleaning on this carb. Appears to be good. Needle looks good. Take a look at our pilot jet next. So we should be running a stock pilot. Let's see what we're running. We are running a 55. And that is clear. And it recommends that we run a 55. So jetting is spot on for this thing. And it recommends that the air screw is out 1.5 turns. Let's see what that was at. Air screw's right here. That was only out like three quarters of a turn. So we need to turn that up. We need to turn that out quite a bit more. All right. There's the spring. Looking good. All right, choke is working. So we can blow out this carburetor with some compressed air. Get a little carb cleaner in there. We'll put this thing back together and we'll see if this thing flares up. All right, carburetor's back installed. Let's get the coolant in.
that gets topped off. Well, I guess we'll see if this thing fires up now. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Will she fire? leaking from anywhere. You've been idling nicely. That's pretty good. All right, she sounds really good. It's smoking quite a bit. I don't think the crank seals are bad though because it idles so nicely and um, it just sounds really, really crisp. So we'll see when we ride it for the first time, but I'm pretty sure it's just the mixture that's in here. Um, I'll have to message the guy and see what he mixes it at. Um, we might take out the gas and mix it 40 to 1. Yeah, I think I might do that just to make sure. Yeah, sounds really good. Not a single drop of anything out of here. So that's awesome. That was just from before when we filled up the coolant. So everything else looks perfect. No leaking at the head. Nothing. So everything's nice and tight. Cool. So this one turned out to be pretty good. We'll take it for a ride. It'll have to be like a snow ride because it's really coming down. We'll go to the land and test this thing out, see what it can do. All right, I want to quick take a look at the oil before we take it for the first ride, just to make sure it's not milky, make sure those water pump seals are working. And yeah, it's really clear. Awesome. That would pretty much be milky right away if those water pump seals were leaking. Spot the dog. <laughs> there he is. I thought we were done with plowing. Unfortunately, we're not.
tires were flat too. All right, we got most of the driveway done. Just wanted the mail carrier to be able to come up here. But uh, this stuff will all melt within the next couple days. So, yeah, just quick uh, got this before it got way too heavy. And it's getting really heavy right now. So, glad we got most of it cleared. We're supposed to get another like four inches tonight, so. Ready? All right, draining out all the old gas here. It looks like it was mixed pretty rich. I'm guessing they mixed it like 25 to one. But uh, we'll get some fresh 40 to one mix in there. 40 to one here. All right, snow finally stopped. Driveway is pretty much clear. Let's load this bike up. All right, made up to the land. The snow here is pretty deep actually, so hopefully we can go somewhere with the bike. Let's see if uh, it's a little less deep over there, but we'll see. The, the goal is to get this thing running perfectly. Um, we changed out the gas, so that's all done. So we'll see if it smokes a little bit less than it was. I think that mixture was pretty rich, but uh, we brought the jets along just in case.
Well, that is deeper snow than I expected. That's about half a foot of snow. And uh, yeah, you gotta really rev it out to go anywhere. Wheels are spinning in the back. <laughs> but you can see, I mean, it's ripping up the dirt pretty good. <laughs> it runs good though. It definitely revs out completely. And uh, we'll get back home, running up and down the driveway a couple times just to see, but it's it's definitely got some power to go through this deep snow. For 125, that's pretty good. That is not bad. And this snow is like turning to ice and slush it is bad. It's really bad to ride in. You can see not much traction there. So before we blow it up from revving it out too long, um, I think we're gonna go back home and ride it up and down the driveway a couple times, see what happens here. All right, now you guys can watch me struggle trying to get this bike back into the truck here. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. Yeah, up and down the driveway, it runs perfect. Hits the power band perfectly. Yeah, it's spot on for jetting. It sounds really good. Well, we just get done with the first ride. This thing is running perfectly. Not a single issue with this bike. Just flawless. Sounds super good once it gets into the power band. Um, it doesn't bog at all. It doesn't leak any fluids at all. Engine super tight, so it is a rock solid bike. Always starts up first, second kick, idles perfectly. So yeah, this one is complete. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. The whole process, picking it up, diagnosing it, tearing it down, rebuilding it, and taking it for the first ride. Definitely very satisfying hearing this bike start up for the first time and run as good as it does. Uh, I was not expecting it to run that good. Not knowing what was in the bottom end, but it is a very, very solid bike. Probably one of the best RM125s I've ridden, for sure. So hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out.